Good morning. And thank you all for coming here today. We appreciate having you here in attendance. I'm House Democratic Leader Tim Grimel, and I'm here today with Representative Marsha Hovey Wright, the chairwoman of the uh, Women's Caucus in the State House of Representatives, as well as Representative Sam Singh and Representative Andy Shore, both of whom are from the capital area here in Ingham County. We're here to talk about access to women's health care and why it matters for all of Michigan's residents. When I say women's health care, it sounds like I'm only talking about half of the population. Obviously, women's health care affects women. Women need services specific to them, such as cervical and breast cancer screenings, pre-, peri-, and postnatal care, menopause care, and contraceptives. But that is literally only half the story. The truth is, women's health care matters to everyone, including men. Every woman is a father's daughter. Many women have husbands who love them and whom they love. Tom, Andy, Sam, and I can tell you that we, like all sons, rely on our mothers for love and support. When a woman suffers and dies earlier than she should because of breast cancer or other illnesses that weren't caught early enough, it isn't just women who pay a high price. When a woman doesn't get the health care she needs when she's pregnant, it isn't just her own health that's at stake. And when a woman can't get the care she needs after a violent attack, everyone who loves and supports her suffers along with her. It seems obvious, but unfortunately, women's health care has been under attack in Michigan. Over the past two years, legislative Republicans have been chipping away at women's access to needed health care. They've ratcheted up regulations on women's health care centers in an attempt to run them out of business. They want to subject women to humiliating and unnecessary health care procedures to discourage them from making their own health care decisions in private consultation with their doctors. And they've even been opposing the expansion of Medicaid using federal dollars, an expansion which would extend health care to 400,000 Michiganders. This is unacceptable. Here to talk about what we are doing to address these challenges is Representative Marsha Hovey Wright. Representative? Thank you, Tim. Leader Grimel. Grimel. Uh, I am Marsha Hovey Wright, and I'm from Muskegon. And I'm here today because I've heard from a lot of people, men and women, who tell me that they're not satisfied with women's access to health care in Michigan. Earlier this year, I took part in the House Democrats listening tour uh, with a stop in Grand Rapids to find out what people's priorities are. Over and over, we heard people tell us that they don't like what Republicans in charge in Lansing are doing to limit women's health care and their access to care. In fact, they told us that what Republicans are doing is extreme. Based on what we've heard, we developed a package of bills and resolutions aimed at, approve, at improving women's health care. These resolutions include naming this week, May 12th through the 18th, as National Women's Health Week in Michigan. Another res resolution urges the Department of Community Health to identify and address the iniquities that exist in the prevention, treatment, and research of diseases threatening women. Our third resolution urges the state to intensify efforts to reduce the rate of teen pregnancy, a goal of all of ours. The laws we propose would require health centers and agencies to offer emergency contraception to women who have been raped. This medicine doesn't end the pregnancy that already exists. It simply prevents a pregnancy from starting. It's the humane thing to do. My bill in this package would require the Department of Community Health to, reach, to teach women about emergency contraception including a description of what it does, how it works, and how to get it. Another bill would require that doctors give information on breast density and give notice to women 
with dense breast tissue that they may want uh, to seek further testing. Finally, we're introducing a proposal that would ensure that young people get accurate, age-appropriate, and objective sexuality education in the public schools. This is crucial because people need good information before they can make good decisions. These laws and resolutions represent the first step toward improving access to health care for women in Michigan. There are more important steps to come. Now I'd like to turn this over to Representative Andy Shore. Andy? Thank you, uh, Representative Hovey Wright. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm Representative Andy Shore. I represent House District 68 here in Lansing and Lansing Township. Uh, you just heard about several laws and resolutions we believe will make a real difference in the lives of women in Michigan. Uh, we look forward to working on these proposals and, and having them passed into law over the coming weeks. We know that doing this will take bipartisan support and we're open to working across the aisle to make that happen. Uh, we also know that Republicans in the legislature have been passing legislation restricting women's access to health care over the past two years. Uh, for that reason, we urge everyone in Michigan who cares about women's health care, you know, men, women, young and old, students, seniors, we urge all of them to reach out to their legislators to make this happen. Uh, we want Michiganders to tell their legislators that because women's health care matters to them, it matters to their legislators. Uh, together we can improve health care for all the women in Michigan.